so we've got Gonzo playing the seventh mechanized core versus Neth playing the Panzergrenadier Grosch Deutschland. This is a match from Still Vision League Season 6, Division 1, quarterfinals. Um, so Gonzo didn't finish top of his group. Uh, so he didn't get a buy, which is strange for Gonzo in a uh, Steel Division League tournament. But still, that's the way it is. So he is going to go through the quarterfinals, and he is up against Neff today. Let's... Oh, I nearly spilt my drink. <laughs> that could have been devastatingly bad. Uh, let's just head to Gonzo's deck on the left. So he's playing the 7th Mechanized Core, Juggernaut Income. Again, I'm... I'm believing this is a counter income pick. So the players do have an option to counter an income pick, depending on what order of the toss of a coin and who picks division first or map first. I'm not going to go through all the rules now, but there is a, an income pick and then a counter pick. So Gonzo picking Juggernaut, I'm pretty certain, like 99.9% certain, this is a counter income pick because it'd be incredibly surprising if Gonzo picked um, Juggernaut and then allowed Neff to counter pick him because you just pick something like Vanguard or Maverick to go against Juggernaut. And Neff's playing balanced. So, 7th Mechanized Core. 77 units of infantry. I mean, Juggernaut, but not Juggernaut, really. I mean, when you look at Gonzo's deck, this is Juggernaut, but not Juggernaut. I mean, what have we got in phase two? We've got a card of Strelke, a card of T34s, a card of ISUs. And that's it. Three cards. Three C face cards. Um, I actually think that Gonzo is making a slight mistake with this deck, in a way. Because um, I'll, get to, I'll get there eventually. Because if, if Neff plays balanced, but plays a really deep deck... Yeah, Gonzo's got 25 points income advantage in C-Phase, but Neff could take this to a, an hour-long game, you know, possibly longer. And Gonzo's got the kind of deck that will last 60 minutes, but it won't go beyond 60 minutes. So, I mean, perhaps any player watching in the future that is up against Gonzo and Gonzo picking Juggernaut... Clearly, from the looks of this deck, he picks Juggernaut for the income, but it's not necessarily going to be the absolute most deepest Juggernaut deck you've ever seen in the world. This is not a 10v10 Juggernaut-style deck. <laughs> um, on the right-hand side, we've got Neff's division. Panzergrenadier Gross Deutschland. So we'll see whether he can take on that Juggernaut deck. So one card of Panther A's in C phase, and then a card of G... GD Sturm Group. So, no. Clearly, oh no, wait. We do have a GD Pioneer as well. But yeah, can't, can't really take on a Juggernaut income deck. And I know that Gonzo has played Juggernaut in the group stage. And I'm not even sure whether it was against Neff or... I can't remember, but I'm sure I've cast Gonzo playing Juggernaut um, previously. So, I think Neff, Neff's made a mistake. Like, Gonzo's made a mistake not making his deck that deep, but then Neff's also made a mistake because he knows what income Gonzo is picking before the game. That's all sorted out. So you've got five minutes to quickly change your deck. So make it deeper. That's that's what I'm thinking. Um, because I think balance versus got, uh, Juggernaut, you don't really have to worry in A and B phase. They're my thoughts. I mean, I'm not saying I'm right, and these guys are Division 1 players, and I'm definitely not a Division 1 player, but... That's kind of my assessment of the deck as I see them, or the decks as I see them. Let's get into the game and let's actually watch the players play the decks. So, on the left-hand side in red, we've got Gonzo playing the 7th Mechanized Core. Uh, sorry, Juggernaut Income. Um, pretty, pretty defensive lineup. There is a bit of an attack in the center with a couple of... Hanko Desaniki units. We'll see whether Neff can oppose that. Looks like he's only got one unit going in there. So, and it's probably a Flammenwerfer. So he's going to lose out in that area. But Neff being very defensive. Looks like he's got a large number of units up north. So I think that's where he's going to make the push. We'll have to wait and see. Early bear batter as well. So is he going to bring in some early artillery? A couple of them. I think he's just using those for the recon onto the top of the hill there. 
Uh, steady defense set up. Pack 40 in a usual spot here. So if you're not aware of this spot, this is a very common spot for a pack 40. Panther D coming into the center. So that is a pretty expensive unit. But Naf doesn't really have to worry too much about being out incomed in the early game. So if he uses the Panther effectively, he could do a fair amount of damage. Looks like Gonzo is opposing that with an SU-85. I mean, perfect starting choice. 180 worth of pen up against the Panther D. But it is going to have to get a bit closer. 1,500 meters versus the Panther D that can engage 2,000 meters. So the SU-85 is going to have to get closer. As long as Neff keeps that Panther at a nice distance, I think he'd be okay there. I think he's kind of using that to oppose anything up on the hill. Does have an SDK of said 251-9D. That could oppose any MG42s that started off on the hill. Or, I guess, not MG42s. Um, Dushkas, in fact, it's pretty rare for a player to use a Dushka. Normally, it's like an SG43. So, that's a bit, bit of a change. And an early artillery call-in from Nap. So, he was picking those bear batches for the early mortar half-tracks. Panzer Grenadier goes down to the SU-152. Bit of an opposing style here from the previous game that we casted. Nilo, someone who brings out just as many light infantry units as possible. And then here we have Konzo with the, the kind of big boys early on with the SU-152 and the SU-85. I guess actually saying that they're not over the top expensive, are they? I was kind of thinking that SU-152 was a little bit more. I think I was getting it a little bit mixed up with the S, the ISU-152 there. Uh, that thing does cost a lot more because it's got the AP shells on it. And some more SU-85s coming in. I think these are totally to oppose that Panther in the center ground. And with one, two, three SU-85s versus one Panther, Neff is outnumbered. He's going to have to use it very carefully. Looks like he's making a slight move up north. No, he's just pushing Flammenwerfers forwards. That's making a small move down south. If Neff is going to get the victory, I think he's, from the looks of how he started, I think this is purely going to come down to who trades more effectively. Neff hasn't really launched a all-out attack from the very start of the game. So I don't think he's looking to use the income advantage in A and B phase. I think he's just looking to out-trade his opponent. Out-trading Gonzo is a tough affair, though, I've got to say. Out-trading Gonzo is a, a tough affair. I'm not sure. I feel like... What, what do you think? Is Gonzo a better aggressive early phase player he was always known for his early phase income aggression especially in Stone division normandy with the um vanguard and the maverick well a bit different in Norm normandy income styles but in the early part of Stone division league as well always a vanguard player but now you know we're seeing him playing balanced and, and now juggernaut is he better at early aggression or is he just better at trading and was that why he was such a good vanguard player just because he always traded well or was it the income you guys let me know in the twitch chat and on youtube as well you can let me know in the comments what you think i've always thought he was a very good trader though uh, going back to days when he played sean sort of balanced on balanced because when Sean played in his Steel Division League, he was always a balanced player. And Gonzo would try and, in the early stages, in the first couple of divisions, uh, league uh, seasons, as P2 comes in there to try and hit that pack 40. He would always play Vanguard versus Sean. And more often than not, Sean would, would win with the balanced income. And then Gonzo kind of switched and started playing balanced versus Sean. And I always felt like a lot of the times he surrendered too early or he didn't try and play he didn't try and out trade sean when he was playing balance but i always felt he was in him as a shrek coming forwards perhaps to snipe that t34 but i don't think he's going to get the opportunity stone groups moving around i think neff is definitely trying this southern assault but the Shrek surely is going to go down to the strokey dp 
And as long as the T-34-76 sort of stays at range, we'll be okay against the Sturm Group. Looks like the Panzer Shrek does survive, wasn't spotted. So Gonzo is falling back his units. I think that's from the mortar attack here. So a nice little play here from Nath. Picks up the flag. But Gonzo is making moves in the centre ground. We saw the SU-85 engagement with the Panther D earlier. We saw the PE-2 strike. I believe it was on a Zisk gun. Here comes a PE-2 against the Sturm Group. I don't know how many Gonzo's got of those PE-2s. He's got two in A phase, so I probably think that's the second one. How's he going to do against the Sturm Group? Can't see the bomb. Oh, no, it didn't drop. It didn't drop. So I think he must have lost lost sight of them in the smoke. The Sturm Group push into the forest. They do have the MP44s. Um, so we'll have to see how they do. They should be okay in this in this forest. But up against the Tankos, I think they're going to struggle. Shruggy Conrotti goes down. That's quite key to remove the veteran C. Nephew is using his units at base two stars. Doesn't have his Sturm Group up to support his um, main attacking force. So, a bit of a mistake from Neff not having his leader close enough. But now the Sturm Group forced back the stroke is. Tanko does go down in centre, but the Flemingworth that were in there went down as well. Another PE2 strike. Actually, this is the one from before that didn't drop. This time does release the payload. And the Tanko Dissanikis do come in. Neff backs away now with his Panzer Grenadiers. Doesn't want to take the engagement and I don't blame him. I think it's the right call. I think he's just going to have to sit in these buildings. But it doesn't help him capture these flags. Maybe, you know, having the units on the edge of this forest here would help him against the Tankos. But engaging against the Tankos in the heavy forest. Ooh, an Opal Blitz goes down there. That's a bit of a loss. They are an expensive unit. 30 points lost there in the transports. Even the Division 1 players lose units in the transports. So if you continue to, to do that, then uh, have no fear. Even the likes of Neff and Gonzo lose those units. So Neff smoking off that Panther D. Not really sure what he's going to do here. I think he's... Is he trying to move it further down south? We'll have to keep our eye on that. He's going to need more smoke, though. I mean, I can't believe he's doing that. He's now backing away that plan for D. Getting the Sturm Group pushed forwards, but I think that's a mistake from Neff. He's already retreated from that position against Tanko Dissaniki, so at least he knows that they're still there. I think actually what happened is he pressed the falling back command. He's, he's fallen back. He's now kind of regathered themselves, and he's pushing back to their old order. Uh, so Neff not quite aware of what's happening in the south, and he's going to lose those Sturm Group. Buckle 190 A6 should destroy the P6. No, P6. Oh, the P40 is going to get behind the F3. Yep, down goes that F3. And that's a nice kill for Gonzo. Will the Focke Wolf 190A6 be able to get the kill on the P2? No. So the P40 is now going to be able to oppose that Focke Wolf 190. And Neff needs to be very careful here. Gonzo calling it away now. There is a three-star Zenot 37 mil. Neff's going to chase that. Neff's got to be careful here. Gonzo bringing that fucking Wolf 190 over the Xenot 37 mil. Neff realizes he's in trouble. Will he get away with that fucking Wolf? Gonzo not going to chase. But it's all about that Xenot. Upvetted by the combat. And another PE-283 onto the field. Panther D still alive. Look how strong Gonzo is in this little center hill. And the fucking Wolf does go down there. Single Xenot 37 mil. There was a PE2 that engaged it perhaps a little bit earlier, but most of the work was done by that Xenot 37 mil. Stub 3G going to engage the SU 85 here. Still can get the kill. SU can also get the kill. SU misses its first shot. Didn't see how the Stug engaged. SU 85 takes out the 251 slash 9D in the center. And Neff not quite aware of that right now. Ooh, Stug 3G takes a hit. 
Bonzo backing away the unit though. But he does take care of both of those 251s and the Panther D's gone down here and the Stug 3D she has gone down as well. I believe to the SU-152 there with a the HE shell. So the Panther D did go down here. Burning Hulk. Looks like it was firing at the SU-85 in this position. Just on the edge of the forest. Gonzo losing a stock and a Panther D there. Incredibly expensive units. And so far, it looks like Neff's trying to trade with Gonzo. But it feels like Gonzo's trading a little bit better right now. And it doesn't bode well for Neff. Income-wise, P2 heading in again. I, I would have thought that would have been for the Pack 40. Mayo Batcher goes down. Mayo... Not quite sure how you pronounce that. SU-152 is going to engage the Pack 40. So that's the reason Gonzo called that PE2 away. You don't need two units to do the job. But that does allow Neff to fall back the pack 40. Look at the way Gonzo's engaging and then reversing his vehicles. Being very weary not to leave his vehicles in a position where they can get fired upon. Ooh, Gross Deutschland Panzer Grenadier goes down there to a shot from the SU-85. The PE2 does take care of a Sturm Group. I feel like every infantry unit that Gonzo takes care of, he's making bank. Because, you know, his best units are probably Strokey DPs at 25 points. Whereas most of the Panzer Grenadiers, yeah, are more expensive. Sturm groups are equally costly, but yeah, the Panzer Grenadiers at 30 points, more expensive. Looks like we do have a push up north. Gonzo's got some sapperies in those heavy forests with the TNT shells. And they should be able to take care of the Panzergrens as long as they engage one on one. And Neff's Sturm Group Buren, I think, is lacking behind a bit. He does retreat his. But yeah, because there's the veterancy buff. So that Fuhrer was lacking behind a little bit. It will prevent the surrender. Gonzo's trying to push that. But. Just got to be a bit careful that that... Sh no, okay. He has halted ho that unit there. He has halted that unit there. The mortar coming in from Naf. He's trying to hit this position in the, the forest. Strokey did try and push forwards, but I think Gonzo retreated it again. So I'm sure it pushed out here into the open. Pack 40's gone down. Missing a lot of action in the center field. I mean, I kind of assume it was the SU-152, but it might also have been the close-range Strokey DP that got the kill there. Got some more smoke in the south. And Gonzo's got his own artillery units in here now. SU-76Ms. And uh, it's been a long while since we actually saw artillery units slogging it out on the battlefield of Steel Division 2. But season six, I think the last time was probably season one. <laughs> That's how long it's been. Um, Sapri caught behind enemy lines there. As Denisov circles above. Gonzo pushing back in the south, and at the moment... I think Neff is going to be okay, as long as this T-3476 doesn't get into the action. Especially with the half-tracks coming in. If Neff uses these half-tracks, you know, correctly, doesn't get too close, I think he'll be okay. But if the T-34 gets involved, I guess the PE-2 is going to spoil the party. And that could be a devastating bombing strike. Yeah, Neff's reloaded one of them. Ooh, no. Gonzo spotted the Fuhrer in the back. So I think Neff actually loaded that up to avoid any kind of uh, Molotov cocktail there. Ooh, but here comes another strike from the PE2s. Gonzo 
pulls out the building by his own bombing strike there. Doesn't get the surrender though. Neff backing away that 251. And his Pioneer units got away far enough that they weren't uh, going to surrender there. The Avatar goes down as the T-3476 does start to get into the action. Gonzo hitting the counter battery onto the 251 slash 281 mil. Neff pushing that far forwards, but being pretty aggressive with that. If Gonzo did have a unit up here on the hill, could snipe that pretty easily. 14-10 to Gonzo. Juggernaut versus Balanced Income. Naf looking in a lot of trouble right now. But like I said, I mean, if he trades, then Gonzo's deck isn't overly deep. Neither is Neff, so <laughs> Neff does have to trade much better than Gonzo right now, but I wouldn't say it's impossible. Tiger E coming into the battlefield, though. That, I think that's going to help Neff out, but the PE2's a constant thorn in Neff's side going to drop onto the Panzer Grenadiers and there's just oh Fockerwolf 198-6 here Gonzo again pushing his way back in there will this Fockerwolf 190 be able to contest I wouldn't be surprised if Gonzo brings out a fight at any moment now I'm guessing he's already spent the income Neff trying to get on the back of that PE2 actually I think that turns really well here and should be able to get the kill should be able to get the kill okay Okay, didn't pursue it. Hmm. The plane did just get out, so... I mean, initially I thought that was a mistake to call that back, but... I think the plane would have got out anyway. I think it just would have got, got out. So it looks like Neff is trying to hit the mortars or the artillery, but he doesn't know that they are SU-76Ms. And they are kind of impervious to mortar fire. At least a single mortar like this. Whereas the 251 slash 82 81 mil is not impervious. Lucky to get away, I think. And he has no veterancy on that mortar compared to Gonzo, who's using two star 76ers or one star with a bet from the combat. Looks like Neff has made some movements here in the center and there are three flags here that could become pretty key for him moving forwards there are some su-85s especially covering this hill but we do have a tiger as well some more su-76 eyes on the way in i think a lovely little position could be around about here to cover the reinforcement road yeah exactly what gonzo is going to use them for Covers this reinforcement road in. Actually covers this one in as well. Might not because of the range difference. Yeah, not quite. But uh, definitely covers this route in. Those Sapperies are going to keep the hopes alive in this town for Gonzo. Yes, SDK have said 251 slash 9D should go down. There it goes. And the Panzer Grenadiers, they are going to follow suit from these SU-76Is any moment now. So Neff's push might be over. Fuck off 190A6 is still around, but I don't think Neff's has noticed. Now he gives the order, but it's a long way to go. I don't think Neff's AI, um, AA is close enough right now, and the Panzer Grenadiers are going to go down. Onzo trying to get away with that PE2. Look at the micro going on here. Ooh, and that fucker wolf is in trouble now. Strain over the 37 mil that killed his brethren. And a P40. Ooh, bad camera work. I was about to say the P40 is chasing. But the fucker wolf might just get out of there. Yes, it does. Oh! No, it doesn't. Man, what did that go? Did that go down to the 37 mil? I thought that had stopped firing. That must have been the last few shots from that 37 mil there. Thanks very much for the follow. Vida full blue. Hopefully you're enjoying the cast. E2 coming into. Oh dear me. Oh. 
Yeah, Nash trying to get away. Come on, get away. No. Actually, I think he just reloaded them to try and keep the infantry alive, but... Yeah, it didn't work out for him. Or maybe he just re... Maybe he just loaded them to try and avoid the strokey DP. Firing on the infantry and using the half-track um, MGs there, actually. I think that was the reason. Okay, Neff does have an SK-18 on the field now. This thing can do counter-battery a hell of a lot better. In the moment, it's targeting the Xenot 37 mil. Uh, this can do the counter-battery job a hell of a lot better. It does have those 100 millimeter HE shells. It should be able to take out the 76.2 mils, but... They are still armoured, so they are going to, you know, present a hell of a lot more damage. Gonzo now has two Xenot 37 mils. So I think that was the reason the A6 went down there. There was two of them, not just one. They have multiplied. Left bringing out the Flak 41 88 mil. How many does he have in his deck? He's only got two. So he has an A phase card of Black 4188 mils. And this is the first time we're seeing them onto the battlefield. 22 minutes into this game. So instead of two, he could have had a C phase card. With what? Six? 246? Two, or 248? And they could have been a much. Like, they would be really expensive, but he is a balanced income, remember? And I think they would be a much better presence against those PE2 bombers. So, perhaps Neff might want to rethink that decision in the uh, future. I'm guessing he hasn't really changed his deck. I feel like he, he's got a balanced deck, and he, he didn't change it before the start of the game. Um, ooh, some big... Hits coming down onto that SK-18. From the 76.2 mils. The problem is those that SK-18 is going to... It's just going to move incredibly slowly. Yeah, now it's pinned down. And that might go down. If... Uh, I feel like Gonzo... He has brought in a supply truck. Although he hasn't quite got it effectively positioned. So one of them, although this one does have a fair few HE shells left on it. We're getting into the nitty gritty of the tactics here. <laughs> 23 minutes into this game. Gonzo's got the 14 10. He's looking incredibly strong right now. But at the same time, you know, Neff has a lot of units on the field. Gonzo does have the income advantage now. I still think it's not out of the reams of possibility for... Neff to get the victory, but he's... I think he's struggling against these PE2s. He does have a, a second Flak 41 onto the field now. But yeah, I think if he'd have had... However many you get available in C phase... Um, at least six. I think it's eight. If he'd have had, like, six available... And had three here, and three here... Those PE2s... See, one of them goes down... So you, you can see how effective those flat 41s are. They're just really starting to help out. Obviously, the, the three-star flat 43 will help as well. But finally, is Neff going to get a handle on these PE2s? Does he still have the opportunity? He's reloaded that flat 41 there. Is he going to move it? Bonzo is targeting the AA, so it's a smart move, but he does actually need to move that flat 41. It's okay reloading it, but a direct hit right now will just destroy it. After Machikis are going to push into the town, covered by smoke. And this is dangerous for Neff. At close range, these Avtos... These Avtos are going to do some devastating damage. And the Stug's not going to help. Well, I guess it will help, but he's got to be careful that he doesn't keep it at uh, long range. 251 slash 9D does snipe one of the Avtos. But yeah, 3 4 against 1. The GD Sturm Group is holding out for now, but it is going to struggle. 
doing a really good job at holding out. Has lost a lot of men, though. Lavenworth is trying to engage. Gotta be careful they don't get too close. And that flamer doesn't work. Is Nath gonna hold back now? I don't, I don't think he's gonna hold back this final lav toe. Oh, is that a PE2? Two PE2s coming in. Neff does hold back the position. Down goes to 2519D. Mobile wagon on here now as well. Hasn't moved that flak 4188 mil, so a little bit of a micro mistake here from Neff. Ooh. Is that being counter batteried as well? Oh my days. This could be a bad time for Neff. This could be a really bad time. Yeah, Neff realizes now he's in trouble. I think he's going to get away with this. Oof. I was sweating. I was sweating on Neff's behalf there. <laughs> Gets away with it. Does get away with it, but Gonzo is massing troops. I mean, he is just massing troops everywhere. And you can't really blame him. It's on Neff right now to kind of push because... Gonzo just has to sit back behind his defensive wall of Avtos and Strokers and P2 Bombers. And he just has to sit there. Yeah, and ne Neff's got to find a way to pierce that wall. Oh, Fuck Wolf 190 starts to chase, but he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, down it goes. Down it goes. I think Neff started to get perhaps a little bit frustrated with those PE2s because... I think earlier in that game, I don't think he'd have chased. I don't. I think he would have called that Fogger Wolf 190 away. What do with that Opal Blitz munitions? Just dropping back and resupplying the 251 slash 2. Stone Group makes a push forward, so Neff hasn't given up yet, but here we go. ISU-122-S. S's. S's. Onto the battlefield. They parade forwards. And there'll be a uh, bit of a thorn. Another. Uh, what would you call it? Another turret to Gonzo's wall. Another tower that Neff has to break <laughs> on the way through. Another wall he has to knock down. He does manage to resupply this town, though, so nice work from Neff here. You know, the infantry does go down to Tankos or whatever unit they went down to. Look at this sneaky position from the 152 here. SDK have said 251 9D goes down as well. I believe that's probably from the, the unit up on... Something took it down. Don't really know what took it down, but something did take it down. Oh, and the Flak 41's in trouble. A bit too close, and just, just more artillery coming in now. Look at Gonzo's artillery. One, two, three, four, five onto the battlefield. It looks like he's going to try another push. It looks like he's going to try another push, which he doesn't really have to do. He is 13-11 up right now. Neff has taken back that central position. And I think Gonzo should sit back right now. I feel like he's going to push over the open ground with his infantry. But I don't think he actually needs to do anything here. Neff is kind of tunneled into this position now, though. And it's going to be tough for him to switch focus, but... He's got to find something else because I think he's continuing to throw unit after unit here. And look at the forces that Gonzo's been able to build up. So I, I feel like he does need to switch focus now. I'm not saying he's going to be successful up north, but I kind of feel like uh, Neff's been hammering the same tactic over and over again. Uh, and he needs to he needs to make a change. Panther Ray back here is starting to help out. The Flag 41 did make it out alive. He's got a couple of Pack 40s up close. 
And these are close enough to deal some devastating damage onto the ISUs on the hill. Gonzo does push forward with a couple of Avtoma Cheekers. GD Pioneer should be able to oppose those reasonably well. And with the half-tracks there as well, I think Gonzo is going to do okay in this center town. I think he's at least going to survive for now, but I wouldn't be surprised if some PE2s appear from the edge of the map. Being called in ahead of the time by command. Uh, John, KLV, yes, this is a uh, competitive Steel Division League match. Season 6, Division 1, we're in the quarterfinals of the tournament. And the uh, winner pro will progress through to the semi-final. Yep, here's the PE2s on the way in. No Fogger Wolf to oppose them. Both of them get the bombs away. And they're going to deal some heavy damage onto the infantry units. Ooh, oh, look at the off map. I didn't even see this get placed. I absolutely missed it. It's the KV-1E. But oh, man, that's a wide area. That is a big 203mm off map. The grill goes down to the SU-85 here. Bonzo like constantly forwards and back with his units. Now he's going to try and push out again. Pack 40, going to start firing, but the SU-152 is going to get involved any minute now. And if that... Oh, shoot a kill. So that was the correct decision there. I don't know whether Neff manually targeted that SU-152, but it was definitely the right decision. But I think he should have switched fire onto the SU-85 after he got the shooter kill. But that is intense micro. 152 does go down, but the SU-85 is going to clean it up. Oh, and the, um, the ISU from the hill gets involved as well. That would have been an excessive micro to ask of Neff. But I think if you're min-maxing, he could have switched fire onto the SU-85 there. Another off map, the second off map, and another PE2. Gonzo did take the town. PE2 goes down. Every single one of those PE2s that Neff kills. Ooh. 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 That was nearly revenge. Every single PE2 that uh, Neff kills is... He's going to help him out, but he's only got 10 minutes left. And there is just... A huge amount of forces that Neff has to get through. Can he do it? I guess it's still possible, but it is looking pretty bleak. Looking pretty bleak. Rizveka with the close range bazooka kill. Ooh, and the mobile wagon has to hot foot it out of there to avoid the counter battery. But avoid it, he does. After Majiki pushing forward for the uh, half-track kill there with the grenade. Let's get that kill as well. We have lost a pack 40 in here. Look at Gonzo's wall of 152s and 122s. Is that three? Yeah, three 122s and a 152. I mean, how is Neff gonna pierce that wall? He's gonna struggle. I think I am going to now call it. I just I just think it's it's over now for Neff. I, yeah, more ISUs onto the battlefield and this looks scary. This looks pretty scary right now. Cuz I don't feel like Neff has the ability to destroy all of this uh, these ISUs. He's got a couple of Panthers and a Tiger and a, and a Pack 40. It's just not enough. And without the fire support to help him, I mean, I think Gonzo can fight one-on-one -on -one with the infantry, uh, especially with the P2s, you know, coming through. That GD Pioneer might surrender as soon as this one gets out of range. I mean, I'm surprised Gonzo isn't going for the surrender here. He might be a little bit weary that there's not more uh, troops. He's shelling the position as well, though, so he isn't going to push forward his tanks into the fire of his own mortar units. 
Yeah, Neth is just slowly getting pushed further and further back. Balanced versus Juggernaut. And he doesn't really have the deck to go long game. I mean, if he had the deck to really push the long game, I think it would be worth kind of holding on for the next seven minutes. But there we have it. He doesn't have the deck. Neff calls it a day. 36 minutes, 13 seconds. And uh, I think that was the right decision. And Gonzo had pretty much sewn up that game. Congratulations to him. 3,600 kills to 1,400 losses. Commiserations to Neff. That is, a, ooh, that is actually a devastating kill loss difference. That is pretty devastating. It's not often you see that kind of difference. Uh, but commiserations to Neff. Gonzo makes it through. He does pick up the 2-0 victory to Neff. And he will make it through to the semi-finals. And we'll face off against Quadriu. That who's in the Twitch chat right now. So we'll no spoilers, but we'll we'll pick up a game from those semis, hopefully tonight. And uh, for YouTube. Later on in this week, or perhaps the following week, whenever whenever it gets released, we'll see that we'll see those games in action, or uh, we'll see a game of it in action. But for now, Gonzo picks off Neff, and let's have a quick look at the kills. The one five two picking up a, a devastating amount of kills. The PE twos picking up a devastating amount of kills, and we're going to see a devastating amount of kills from a lot of units when when there's a kill difference. Uh, that we have got. The ISU-122S is coming in towards the end as well. Picking off Tigers and Panthers. I really think they did start to seal the deal at the end. Yeah, I mean, actually, when you think about it. Most of the work was done by this SU-152. The PE-2 here. I mean, this, this SU-85 did take down that Panther D. That was very early on. Another SU-85, I think the PE-2s, they aren't getting like kill after kill, but I think they're just doing, they're chunking down damage. So they might kill and they might not necessarily fully kill an infantry unit, but they're taking like eight men out of an infantry unit every time. Um, but yeah, kind of surprised actually there weren't more units there with like big long kill lists. Let's have a quick look at Neff's kills. Sturm Group picking up some early kills. I mean, we're not going to see anything over the top there. In fact, that, that's all that we are going to see. Yeah, he did, I think he really struggled, really struggled in that match. And I have the feeling that he didn't change his deck. I think he picked the balanced income first. I think Neff is more of a balanced player. That's the impression I get from him. Uh, from, from him as a player and playing against him and watching him and casting him. And I think he picked balance first. I think Gonzo counter picked with Juggernaut. And I don't think actually either player changed their decks. Um, perhaps if Neff would have taken five minutes, added a few more cards in there and really tried to push Gonzo longer, maybe it would have been more successful, but maybe he wouldn't. Who knows? But there we have it. 36 minutes, 13 seconds. Gonzo picks up the victory, progresses through to the semifinals, and we will see him against Quadriu shortly.